Hey, this is Doug Doug, where we solve business problems that no one has. Today, I'm gonna let an artificial intelligence program rewrite my entire LinkedIn profile. I'm gonna have them go through every job that I've had and let the AI write an entirely new job description for me. And you might be wondering, why? Why do this, Doug? Well, let me tell you a story. Eight years ago, when I got my first real programming job, I started to get lots of spam emails from recruiters based on my LinkedIn and my email, which is normal for the tech industry, but I especially got emailed by this one company who would email me far more than anyone else. And you know, I would like politely tell them I'm not interested in this job, but they would keep emailing me sometimes about the job that I just told them that I don't want. And after it got to the point of 15 emails a year from this one company, I finally replied to the main recruiter and said, please please take me off your contact list. She did not reply. Not only did she not reply, she and her coworkers continued to email me every few months, despite the fact that I had very clearly quit the programming industry. After five more years of this, I once again asked her to please stop emailing me and made it very clear that I am not her target audience and I am not suitable for whatever company they're trying to hire me for. She did not reply. It is now 2021, and I still get emails from these same recruiters every few months. This is why I'm letting an AI rewrite my LinkedIn. Because if they're going to try to recruit me for eight straight years, then I'm going to make myself the least recruitable person on the planet. We're gonna start this off by rewriting my job at the esports team Tempo Storm, where I helped run a professional studio and produced various media pieces and esports tournaments. But the AI can do better than that. So I have this description here, served as the executive producer for the esports company Tempo Storm. So what if I literally just use this first sentence to start off? Here's the prompt and we'll let it complete. Served as the executive producer for the esports company Tempo Storm. Co-founder, talent manager, and stream producer at TSM XDG. That's not true. X Mithy sits down with Kyle to talk about where he got his start in gaming and the biggest inspirations that shaped him. This is about League of Legends. In the interview, he also discusses his current job. So now we would take this, pop that in here, and we save it. And then maybe the company stops emailing me about a program job. This one doesn't feel very potent though. Okay, what should the first sentence be? I want the start of the prompt to be accurate. I'm mean, gonna just be like, led a huge team. Let's, let's see what happens. Led a huge team. A huge, high-powered, intimidating team. The likes of which you can't even imagine. Our current vice president is this guy. When he came to do a breakout session on leadership, I remember sitting there thinking, holy crap, this is it. This is the guy I want to follow for the next few years. These were the values I had as a staff member. These are the leadership lessons I would tell my current team. I was even envious of the ease with which he commanded respect. Big guy, no. This one's good. This one's real good. Tempo Storm. This was my last job before becoming a huge YouTuber. This is also my first paying job. This is when things started to look up. When one company hires you, they might not need you for another month or so. When you work a lot, they may not need you for a few weeks. My experience was like that. Up late every night recording content for the next video. I would work from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m with my last shift ending at 7 p.m. Okay, this is number three. I may have left my job, but if I had stayed, I would have been amazing. And here's why. If you've read my previous blogs, you know how little I like to travel, and yet I have traveled the world. I traveled for work. In fact, I traveled every week for about six years. It was how I supported myself, and I loved it. I didn't have to live in a hotel, and I got to eat at restaurants with lovely people. My best friend and I lived in Paris for almost a year. I would take a week off work, rent a car, and we would just drive across France and be tourists in Paris. We saw the Eiffel. Okay, so we've got three options. The options are, let a huge team, a huge, high-powered, intimidating team. Option two, this was my last job before becoming a huge YouTuber. This is also my first paying job. This one's good because this would directly contradict probably all the previous descriptions. Number three, I may have left my job, but if I had stayed, I would have been amazing, and here's why. I do like this one because my job description is about me taking a week off work and just driving across France. Like, that is not what you talk about when you're describing the work you did. All right, one, two, or three, these are the options that are going to describe my previous job. Man, it's looking like number one's gonna take it. Number one is more of just kind of a confidence play, right? Somebody's gonna read this and just be like, whoa, whoa, huge team. Congratulations, this one wins. This is my new description for my previous job. This is fucking nonsense. The first sentence is just like, fuck you, recruiter. <laughs> this is so aggressive. Next up is my teaching job at UC Berkeley. I was a student instructor for one of Berkeley's introductory programming classes. Why don't we generate all three of them at once? Are we good with these three prompts? Led 26 students through daily three-hour classes. You wouldn't believe how hard I educated these students. I became the leader of a new generation of students. Number one, led 26 students through daily three-hour classes. He learned how to use his talents to train a puppy. I had never had a dog in my house and all of a sudden I'm on the receiving end of what we're doing with these dogs, said Loftus. The students had eight months to train the puppy to perform 10 commands. The program is a partnership between Yale, Animal Farm Foundation, 
Hefer International and the Children's Medical Center at UC Berkeley. The program will be in town until June 11. <laughs> to learn more, <laughs> click here. Nothing will happen if they click there. That one's pretty good. That's number one. You wouldn't believe how hard I educated these students. Every time. Every single time. When I asked one of them to repeat the last three letters of a word, one of them would say, Don't worry. I'll sound it out in the dark. And I kept hearing them whisper, Don't worry, we won't tell anyone at each other as they walked by. I was absolutely astonished. I had been in charge of the classroom, of me, for only six weeks. How could that have happened? I was almost embarrassed. My own students really had the student in them. A few days later, I... This one's pretty good because it's like kind of dark. Well, it's not dark. It's literally dark, I guess. Led 26 students through daily three-hour classes. Got big. Big smiles from the students when I joined in and went on breaks. This time, I took my day pack full of supplies so I could haul some laundry home. It was unseasonably cold, so I was able to dry a load in between classes. For the record, I did not do my laundry in between classes. One student thought it was very exciting when I was done and brought me a roll of toilet. I never dried any loads when I was teaching. New description for my teaching job at UC Berkeley. I think we know which, which one it's going to be. All right, the dog one is real fucking funny. I'm happy with this. Next up is my programming job at EA. And despite what that might sound like, I did not actually work on any video games or anything of importance. I just worked on the tech stack that EA uses for their mobile games. Worked on the client side of the mobile SDK team at Electronic Arts. It sounds pretty boring. Yeah, it was not very exciting. My programming had a profound but sinister effect on EA's profits. I single-handedly saved EA's prospects. I don't want to straight up lie in my portion. I paid Pissed on the EA servers. What? Hello, Mr. Calculus Douglas Douglas. I am a representative here. from the US government. We are very impressed by your recent changes to your LinkedIn and wish to offer you the position of Supreme Leader. Please Whoa. get back to us as soon as you can. Well, guys, this might be my last stream. I'm about to be hired as the Supreme Leader of the government. <laughs> I'm not sure of what. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for cold, hard business. Three, two, one. Worked on the client side of the mobile SDK team at Electronic Arts. Researching C -sharp and .net, introduced myself to the f Windows Phone Convergence team. Brittany had a blog post on that, which is investigating a C -sharp and .net solution for Windows Phone 7 that would be browser-based. Not that this idea is dead yet. Posted by Brian Sumner. Joined the Wintana Google Plus group and will update my users of the solution I made for Palm on Android and Nook. <laughs> Wait, hold on. So I'm working on Android, Nook, in Google+, Plus, on Windows Phone, in C Sharp and .NET, and it's browser-based. What the fuck is this job? I don't understand at all. Who's Brian Sumner? Please go to the link. Is it appropriate? I don't want to... I don't know who the fuck Brian Sumner is. No, <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> All right, that's, that's actually better though. It's more of a flex on the, on the recruiters who check me out. They're like, the previous one that's like, for more information, click here. And they click it. They're like, there's no more information. And then they come to this one. They're like, okay, thank God. At least Brian Sumner is going to tell us what's going on. And this link is broken. My programming had a profound but sinister effect on the profits of electronic arts. In only 20 months, the money flowing into the company increased fivefold from 3.4 billion to 11 billion. It's safe to say that's the single most important thing that happened to EA in those early years, says Chris Connor, who now works at EA. The long-term effect on the company's bottom line might have led EA to take long-term risks with their employees' health and well-being. But in the 1990s, even the sharpest game companies were focused on short-term profits. For instance, maybe you remember EA as the... All right, that's number two. Number three, the motto EA Sports, it's in the game, changed my outlook on life, and here's why. That says it all, at least for me. EA Sports, just in the past few months, introduced the Journey Mode in the FIFA series. That's the main hook of this Madden game, which they also do an amazing job of utilizing all over the game. EA Sports' Star Wars Battlefront was also the biggest video game of 2015, and it gave me my biggest video game moment ever in 2015 when I logged in for the first time and played as Darth Vader for the first time in Star Wars Battlefront. EA Sports has really learned how to blank. Dude, we've got three pretty potent options. All right, get your boats in. Okay, I figured as much. Dude, it had to be number two. Number two is so aggressive. All right, congratulations. Uh, this is my new EA job. Wait, <laughs> should I just put a period? But then even the sharpest game followers are focused on long-term profits. For instance, maybe you remember EA as the... <laughs> 
<laughs> God, it's even more of a power move. You gotta leave them wanting. Next up is a summer job I had to program the Android application for the P90X workout program. This was like two guys were working on an app and they hired me to help out with this Android thing and I never met them and they didn't end up paying me for half of my work, but it did actually put really good stuff on my resume. I'll start the first prompt just normally. What should the second prompt be? Two guys got me ripped in more ways than one. Christ, this has nothing to do. It doesn't even mention programming or more P90X. Option number one. Developed major features of the official P90X Android application. And even though they never paid me 50% of my salary and Doug was considering criminal proceedings, the official P Android P90X app now lives in the Play Store. True. If you're a fitness fan and can't wait to do your pull-ups and push-ups in the wild, you should get the official P90X Android app from the Play Store and take a look at some of the things it can do. Don't bother installing the commercial release of the P90X app and instead get the official one and download the advanced workout now. Install the official P90X Android app. I don't get paid by the P90X people, so I'm not affiliated. True, very true. They did not pay me. In some ways, this one's pretty solid. The P90X workout program has absolutely annihilated obesity in America. And in only three months, my love handles are shrinking. That is a power move. People have lost 30 plus pounds on this program and it seems easy enough. So in my opinion, they know what they're doing. I think these two videos can even be combined because I think it's great to stretch both sides of your body at the same time. I started my trainer workouts on Sunday. They kicked my ass. Seems so hard. I think I've stumbled upon a pain of sitting in this chair for an hour a day while I'm watching the girls. I don't know if it's. This one leaves a lot to the imagination. It's pretty potent. Somebody's kicking my ass, but also my ass is in the chair. I mean, this is a power move opener. And once again, I want to reiterate, this is for a programming job for the Android application. <laughs> this will probably not work. I don't think this is going to go anywhere, but here we go. Two guys got me ripped in more ways than one living on borrowed time. Please check back soon as I will be trying to post something daily, so please keep checking back to see what I've come up with. This is for my LinkedIn profile. Also, thank you all for your well wishes and best wishes for my niece and sister. I will keep them in my prayers. My niece and sister will be having back surgery this week, so I'm gonna ask all of you to send some good. This could be, okay, cause this could be a power play of like, the recruiter is, is looking at my profile. They're like, I don't know if this person is even qualified for the Android programming job. I'm gonna spam at him. And then they see this and they think, wow, his niece and sister is gonna be having back surgery. I should give him a job. He needs the money. Okay, we've got four options. Number one is, this is like an advertisement for the app. Number two, my love handles are shrinking. I don't think I want this on my LinkedIn profile. It would be one thing if I mentioned sitting for an hour a day watching the girls, right? And then I like follow up and kind of, you know, clarify maybe what the situation is but I just cut off the next sentence. I don't know, man. It implies that I was like arrested while I was writing this watching the girls. The implication here, we gotta change it. Can I change it to men? I feel like that's fine. Young men. <laughs> well, okay, if this one works, I'm going to replace girls. Option number three. Oh, this is my, my niece and sister having back surgery. Okay, not surprisingly, we're gonna go with the love handles. I also think I've stumbled upon a pain of sitting in this chair for an hour a day while I'm watching the blank. Whatever word comes next, the single word that comes next, we, we swap that in for girls and we're good. I just don't want my profile to imply anything illicit or fundamentally creepy. I'm watching the kids, no! Is that better? Can I redo it? This one's worse. So how about I get, I can redo a single word or phrase if it's particularly bad, but I have to gift five subs every time. I also think I've stumbled upon a pain of sitting in this chair for an hour a day while I'm watching my children. You know what? That's fine, I'll take it. Everybody still wins, because I'm still watching kids. We get the best of every single world, incredible. The next up is ESL, it's like a huge esports company, and I spent two years as a project manager, a producer, running tons of esports events, like big Hearthstone shows. Okay, here's what I actually did. Managed the design, budgeting, and execution for live esports tournaments and media content. So we got a lot to work with there. I think we could mention the games, we could mention the fact that some of the stuff I did is technically on Hulu. Why don't we just turn the temperature up a lot? Controls the randomness of sampling, the creativity. Cool, so let's make this one really creative. Cool, so this one might be a little bit less coherent because we are doing maximum creativity. You ever watched Hearthstone in 2016 or 2017? I led almost every major tournament, including who tw Guys, this is too creative. How does one AI generate so much creativity? This is not English, right? Who is 
business Zeus. I'm gonna redo it with less creativity. Let's try a 1.5 creativity. I learned almost every major tournament, including playing almost almost from B, apparently pony under mop. Dude, these are too creative. It's not even English. It just like picks random words. We could go low, make it less than one. 0.5. This is an experiment. We won't keep this one unless it's awesome. You ever watched Hearthstone in 2016 or 2017? I led almost every major tournament, including the last two BlizzCons, and I'm sure you've seen me at the top of the leaderboard. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a pretty good player. I've been playing Hearthstone for almost a year now. I've made a lot of progress. I'm not the best, but I'm pretty close. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a pretty good player. I've been playing Hearthstone for almost a year now, and I've made a lot of progress. I'm not the best, but I'm pretty close. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a pretty good player. I've been playing Hearthstone for almost a year now, and I've made a lot of progress. I'm not the best, but I'm pretty close. But I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not the best. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not the best. I'm not gonna lie. It's very honest. We'll leave this one, we'll leave this one. Doug worked for an esports agency that made millions off the backs of young athletes competing in video game tournaments, which were broadcast on TV. Not correct. It would appear that Doug's pay was meager, but he made up for it by watching four to five hours of video game tournaments, taking notes and filing lawsuits against everyone he thought was being ripped off by his employer. When the FBI approached him in 2014 about an investigation into the pay to win craze in esports, he said, what? Did you watch my website? I was writing on site. I was doing the videos. I was fucking writing. I was doing a lot. A reporter, Doug Williams, was once an employee of an esports agency that made millions off the backs of young athletes competing in video games tournaments, which were broadcast on TV. Doug and his coworkers were paid a tiny salary, were prohibited from competing in any video game. Yeah, I guess my channel's name is Doug Doug Williams, which is the new description for my job as an esports producer. So it's between, I'm not gonna lie to you, and the FBI investigation. Three, two, one. Oh, not gonna lie to you, congratulations. Next up in college, I did a programming internship at Zynga, the beloved developers of Farmville, where I worked on a canceled Facebook game. This was for Pirateville, which never released, but it was like, like a new version of Farmville. It was gonna have pirates. We could start with that. Option number one. I worked on a pirate video game at the beloved media conglomerate Zynga, and it was a nightmare. From being a nine to fiver who'd look forward to coming home to eat an organic green salad, to waking up on my knees in a crawl space under the desk. I gotta change music here. The worst part, I didn't even get to do the whole crawling in a crawl space part. My last day was nearly two months ago. I still haven't managed to bring myself to eat a single salad. It might not even be worth my time. Maybe become too bitter. Maybe I'm just not cut out for it. The job I did lead to a bit of fun is when I met Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> All right, let's go back to some fun music. <laughs> it's like, it's when I met Jimmy Fallon. I told him how we went to college together, how we played video games in the arcade together. Fallon wasn't sure what to think about that. I don't know what the fuck. We just did a roller coaster. I'm happy the, the, the story has a happy ending though. Everybody loves Jimmy Fallon. Look at me. Look at me. I'm the captain now. I am the captain of the Washington Capitals. I am the captain of the Washington Capitals. I am the captain. Are you watching? Are you watching? Are you watching? Did you see what I did there? You like what I did there? Can we stay here all night? You don't even know. Did you know about the new captain in town? Yeah, didn't know. Everybody was in the dark. I can't be the captain. I'm not really good at it. Do you see that sign over by the locker room door? It says Captain Ofkin. I didn't even know that existed. Who do you think they are? What is that sign even about? Captain Ofkin? Is that their term for me? It is a term for me. I've been the captain for years now, but this is my time. I'm so excited. I'm also scared. All the... I mean, this is this is going in a different direction than the others. I love that, like, we put in captain twice in the prompt. The AI is like, all right, everything has to be captains. Which new description for my job as an intern working on a pirate Facebook game? Oh my god, four votes. Four votes off. Captain wins. Dude, look at the, the previews, right? If somebody just opens this, we kind of beat them down, right? We let them in to our ups and downs, the trials and tribulations, and then finally they get to the bottom, and I look them square in the eyes, and I say, look at me. I'm the captain now. By this point, I've got them by the balls. This job is mine. Next up is the description for my college education at UC Berkeley. Okay, we can write a description for what I did at my college. In the first two years, I got great grades in my classes, 
But then once I became a junior, it suddenly became difficult for me to get good grades. True. My GPA was 2.65, which is much lower than expected. I was very upset and worried, and I figured that maybe this semester will be different. Fortunately, no luck. I still have a good GPA, but it has been dropping steadily. 2.5 and now 2.45, not good at all. I feel like I don't deserve it because I have been lazy. I've not done much work, have not attended class regularly, have not always come to class on time. That is the lowest of lows and probably the lowest of lows that I will ever be able to get to in my life. I can't help feeling bad about myself and I guess I should take some responsibility for my low GPA. I was not the only person who was lazy, but I could have been. I don't know why you would put this in your LinkedIn profile. It's not the place to wax poetic about your sinking GPA. I was such a damn good student. They made me a teacher. Mother didn't raise no fool and a teacher I was. The other day, my English class went out to the local high school to see It's a Wonderful Life. They had all kinds of snacks and drinks to keep them occupied to help them not talk during the movie. Did I mention I teach seniors? I should have known I would have had to keep an eye on those bozos. I was con very concerned about the soda thing. There were four of them. They were pretty quiet, just enjoying the movie. Everyone else in the movie was quiet too. No one was talking, except when the kids couldn't hear the speaker. God, I know this is gonna go somewhere good. We're at the movies in a high school at the seniors that I'm teaching, I think. No one was talking except when the kids couldn't hear the speaker. It was perfect, but then, out of the blue, as I was reaching for my coffee, I heard this stupid American-accented voice pipe up. Well, of course I had to turn. Maybe the strategy here. We leave them a cliffhanger. We want the recruiters to think, oh my god, I could hear the rest of the story if I only hire this man. That's pretty good. I don't know if I'm teaching high school students or something. So there I was, sitting on campus with a book in one hand and a beer in the other, when suddenly I'm interrupted. We're concerned about your drinking, the police officer said. I think they've already given you the magic word to ask the administration, so you can't answer anymore. I looked at him for a second, then I saw him. To me, he looked like a perfect clone of my dad. His hair was a little shaggier, his face slightly paler, and his gait was a little slower. The only difference was that he was a police officer. It was him. I was hallucinating. They had to be. My best friend, Myers had dragged me out of the dorm room and taken me to this bar, a place with arcade games, karaoke, three dollar beers. I wasn't sure what I was in for, but I knew I wasn't gonna like it. You see that game over there, Myers asked. <laughs> Sorry. You see that game over there? Myers asked. What happened to my police father? God, I want to know the rest so badly. Which new description for my <laughs> college education? Wow, you're going for police dad mostly. The incredible story of how we found our policeman father is my new description for what I did in college. Congratulations. And last but not least, my job as a YouTuber. All right, we've got one left. Doug, Doug. With this one, we maybe need to do a few more. This one needs to be really potent, I think. My YouTube channel can be pretty weird. So let me explain it with food. One, my channel gets weird if I watch popular videos on YouTube. I think this is why people can't find the channel. More recently, I found myself eating strawberries. I would have a strawberry for five days, just watch them crumble on the desk. Don't ask how I was managing to eat them. I keep forgetting what I'm doing with my videos. So I just go on and on, and then after a while, it all feels like a blur. Three, it's very difficult to say anything intelligent when your body is full of strawberries. That's about all that's worth saying, really, haha. -ha. I don't know what makes me laugh more, the video, or the fact that I just said, haha, -ha, twice in a row. I've been getting a lot of questions about the videos, so I thought I would put the questions to you guys. Is it normal to eat the strawberries? This has some promise. A few times people have said true in chat. Like none of these stories have been relatable. Somebody typed true in chat, I think during the police dad thing. Nobody in chat has been stopped by the cops for alcoholism and realized it was their father. I've touched over 1 million people through my job as a teacher and an author. My next book is a young adult paranormal fantasy entitled Rancho Murders. I'm holding a raffle copter giveaway for a free copy of the book. Enter the raffle copter below and then make sure to share it with your friends. Every person who enters the giveaway will be entered twice. <laughs> that has no out- whatever. True. True, true. The contest will run until Monday, October 20th, 2014 at 11.59 p.m. Winners will be announced Wednesday, October 22nd, 2014. Good luck. Rancho Murders is set in my hometown of Broken Era, Oklahoma. I love my town and want to share some of the things there are to do there with the others. We want Rancho Murders. I'm wildly successful and it's all thanks to Twitch chat doing the hard work for me. 
True. Now playing. Watch this. Twitch chat works hard for me. True. Guys, this one's this one's a little too true. I'm a superstar, a multimillionaire, and my secret to success is Twitch chat doing all the work for me. Sometime in the fall, Twitch chat told me I was the ninth highest streamer in the world. At the time, I'd only been streaming for a few months, so I was thrilled. I thought of myself as a mid-tier streamer at best, but I was really just a warm body streaming from time to time. I am now the ninth highest streamer in the world. YouTube! Now, I know some of you might be thinking, oh my god, how does that guy make all that money? I hear ya, you're not wrong. This is still my first year as a full-time streamer. If you told me a few years ago that I'd be telling you this, I'd have laughed you out of the room. I didn't stream for a few years after college. I had a few jobs, but I found it. This one was good, this one was good. Try doing one of your video titles. We could do, I'm trying to take a bath, but Twitch chat keeps assassinating me. That one could actually be good. I'm trying to take a bath. But Twitch chat keeps going off. You know how it is. Want to take a bath? Twitter wants to chat with me. Stupid twee. I told them last week they were being too talkative. See, what happened is, I was a nymphomaniac all through college, and I used to spend my hours typing away at a laptop. I'd put on a bathrobe, then drop my clothes in the hamper because they looked like I'd been wearing them for days. I'd waltz into the bathroom, start writing. But somewhere along the way, I lost the fine art of writing for a living. It's kind of hard to have time to write when you have two little kids and a husband. That's why I have a boyfriend. I started a relationship with Nick Cage. I'm sure you saw him in Bruges or whatever it's called. He's an actor, you see, and we live together. Well, I live with him. I don't have to share him. What he doesn't realize is that he's an actor too. And you see, the film I was just working on isn't quite finished yet. I don't have a trailer or anything to... Yeah, that was pretty good. In the video game Skyrim, I create mods that spawn cheese, kill fondle, and slaughter zombies with a potato. I also replace the statue of a woman holding a sword with a weeping man holding a statue of a sword that isn't an actual sword. And then I buy the woman a copy of Limbo. I'm a god. I call myself Diablo the Cheater. As far as I know, I'm the only person who writes a list of cheating cheats and uses it in-game. My mod turned the game... My mod turned the game... into an interdimensional sex simulator powered by a fucking necromancer! And I use that game on a daily basis. To date, I've cheated in 30 games! 22 of them were developed by other users, and the other two were made by me. And today, this motherfucker's named after me. I use a relatively simple cheat to game console games. What I do is turn the switch on the controller I use into a button on the console, and then I press it to trigger cheats that give me a better experience. Here's what those she... I don't want to be premature, but I believe we have found the new description of my YouTube career. This just whiplash is so, so hard with so much passion. My mod turned the game into an interdimensional sex simulator powered by a fucking necromancer. So true. It's time to vote, ladies and gentlemen. We got five, five prompts to vote on. Good luck. I think there's an early lead coming out. Three, two, one. I'm Diablo the Cheater. I'm a god! I play an interdimensional sex simulator powered by a fucking necromancer! And I use it on a daily basis. Oh! Let's get this over to the network. You're never gonna get a job again? Or maybe I'll get lots of jobs. Gotta crack a few eggs to make an omelet. Profile pic? We could do a new profile. I mean, what would the new profile pic be though? Take a selfie right now. You with the Thanos painting suit. This is for like jobs. This is for like work connections. <laughs> All right, I'll say it under business. I mean, this is an aggressive LinkedIn profile picture. To be fair though, does match Diablo the Cheater. And looks like our work here is done. Ever since February of 2021, this has been my LinkedIn profile. And I'm happy to say that those recruiters finally stopped emailing me. Just kidding, they emailed me five weeks later. I've gotten four emails since this change and I finally replied to Bobby and asked exactly which part of my LinkedIn profile makes me so qualified for this job. He did not reply. And now I look forward to forcing every one of their recruiters to have to reread my LinkedIn and look at me in a Thanos bathing suit. This is Diablo the Cheater signing off.